Nowadays, the main line of the Grand Prix attack begins when white plays five, bishop to b5. And here, almost always, black replies with knight d4, not allowing white to take on c6. And with good reason, because if black allows this, then white gets a very good game. Uh, we saw in the game Trent versus Tilicheyev that what happens after d6, but there are other moves in this position. And one of the key moves we need to briefly go over is the move 5 e6. I genuinely believe this is an error. This is an inaccuracy because it allows white to take on c6. And after b takes c6, well, d takes c6 is also possible, but looks even worse because now white could try e5 in one go. Uh, followed by knight e4, and there's no way to really protect against the, these squares. But with b takes c6, at least here after e5, this is a key move in this position, you fix the structure, fix the weakness on d6, and fix the weakness on c5, and this knight move is absolutely uh, devastating for black in a lot of variations. So after e5, Black has to react in the centre with d5. A move like knight e7 simply isn't sufficient. Knight e4 is easy pickings for white. He's going to win at least a pawn with a huge advantage. So d5, stopping white play knight e4 is crucial. should be noted that d6 doesn't quite achieve this because knight e4 is still possible. So d5 is almost forced. And here... Um, we reach a position where, now that black has played d5, this pawn on c5 is always a weakness. And once more, we've seen a lot of these types of structures in the e6 uh, chapters, and we should apply the same rules. We're going to gang up on that pawn on c5. And here, I just like the move castles. Let's just get developed, make sure our king is safe, and after knight e7, now play d3. And we have our standard setup of playing d3, b3, knight a4. The bishop traditionally comes to a3. And sometimes if we can play c4 as well, just to cement that weakness, that's what we should do. And uh, I thought I'd show the game Plaskett Devro from the year 2000. Another English grandmaster playing this opening with white. And he made it look really easy to play against this variation. Let's see what happened. Well, d3 castles was played. Uh, there was another game with c4, which, again, very thematic. This was seen in Rogers Stocek, so between two grandmasters. And here, after c4, Ian Rogers, the Australian GM, took. Of course, black isn't going to recapture immediately because white could take the queen off. He plays bishop a6, pinning. And after b3 now, d takes c4, well, Rogers took on d8, and uh, rook takes d8, b4 was his idea, leaving black with these double pawns. Rogers went on to win this game, but actually I feel that after d takes c4, Move knight e4 straight away could cause black even more problems. The threat is to come into d6, even to c5. And if knight f5 protecting against it, then simply queen takes d8, rook takes d8, and now rook e1 is the move I like, just getting out of the pin. Black can't really take on b3 because now there's too much pressure down the a line and he's going to lose a pawn. So after rook e1, let's say castles, well that still isn't good enough, bishop a3. And after rook f e8, the move I like most here, bishop c5. And the bishop is an absolutely dominating monster in the black position. We threaten a pawn on a7, uh, we cover this whole diagonal. Uh, moves like g4 are now not even out of the question because the knight is short of so many squares. And um, with all of his weaknesses, black is basically crippled here. So I quite like that idea. If uh, black decides to play 
bishop a6 instead of c4. Here I like the move knight a4. And once again, black is in a spot of bother. Not really easy to play against. And this was actually seen in the Plaskett Devereux game. So knight a4, c4 was played. Um, queen a5 doesn't really help so much because white can just play b3 and kick the queen away. Uh, and, uh, well, doesn't seem like that's actually helped black at all. So c4 straight away was played by Devereux, but now knight c5. So the knight comes in with quite devastating effects. Takes on d3, white recaptured. The trick is that uh, if knight a6, queen b6 check is what Devereux was banking on, and that relieves quite a lot of the pressure. So I like the fact that Jim just took back on d3 with the pawn, and after castles bishop e3, we see white has got a huge bind on the queen side. That knight on c5 is a monster, and... Uh, if black is forced to go bishop c8, which is what happened in the game, we can clearly see that white has made uh, huge progress in the opening. You've got the open c file as well to attack against this pawn, and you've even got an outpost for a knight on d4. This is um, really crushing stuff. So let's just have a look at how Jim played this so we can see some technique. Queen d2, queen c7. I think black's trying to organize an f6 push, but it's never really e that easy. Rook a c1 was played. Rook e8, not sure if that's the best move, but even still. Bishop f2, f6, well he managed to get f6 in, but here I like the way Jim played. He played with bishop d4, basically exchanging the dark squared bishops, and if we look at this position, these two knights are... Uh, killing black. You really simply can't deal with uh, their threats and the control they exert over the key central squares. e5 was tried by Devereux, but uh, after fe5, queen e5, queen f2, the game was already over. Queen f7 check is a threat, and if knight f5, rook c e1 is huge because of the pin. Knight e3, well, Queen f7 check, king h8, knight takes c6 was curtains. So, one illustration there of this line. I'm not a believer in this e6 move on move 5. I'm not a believer in d6. I really feel like black's only move uh, to uh, maintain the balance is to play knight d4. And that brings us to our main lines, which will be examined uh, on this DVD in some detail.